Eric and I are going to do some gi techniques today, utilizing the gi. Uh, to us, the gi is great for competition, gi competition, but it also simulates clothing. In a real fight situation, it can simulate a jacket, a sweatshirt, a shirt, a polo shirt. You could utilize it against your opponent. Your opponent could attempt to utilize it against you, and you need to know the defenses also. So we'll go over some uh, techniques that aren't very complicated. Some of them may be considered advanced, but, but they're really not that hard to learn. So most of these techniques, most of your viewers out there uh, can, can learn them and they're relatively safe as long as you're careful with your opponent. So the first technique we'll do is we'll, we'll be in a tie-up situation. Let me get Eric on this side. He's gonna uh, attach to my collar, very common. And what I wanna do is double up on his hand and break the hold. Of course, if it was a fight situation, we'd be striking first and then breaking the hold. Competition-wise, I double up on the sleeve here and I'm gonna go on, uh, towards the back side of the wrist, hitting the front side and away and pulling back and breaking the hold. I force this hand down to the mat, which brings his feet forward. I'm gonna keep my fist rolled into his sleeve this way. As I fake at his leg, he pulls the leg back and I snap the back of the head. Capture the collar, step over, and I'm gonna capture his gi right here. There's this crease right here on his gi by his knee. I have his collar on the opposite side, and I'm gonna roll over that same shoulder that grabs the leg. So I roll, capture his forearm so he can't defend, and choke. If he starts defending with this, this hand, I'll bring it up, and I'll do what we call kata ha. A lot of times, we'll lock our feet up there. A little variation here, the, the gear or clothing can sometimes be used to bind your opponent up. So if you notice in the last situation, I used a collar to choke, I used a pant leg to control and put Eric in the bow and arrow. This time I'm gonna use his apron, the apron of the gi, to bind his arm up to attack him with another collar choke. So I'll use the same takedown. He grabs on, double up on the sleeve, push down, pick at the leg, pop him. I'm gonna step over the head, step over the head here and get control. I'm gonna rip up on his arm. I pull up on his arm, he's trying to pull his arm back. If you watch this, pull back Eric, my, my wrist is very strong here. It'll hold him long enough for me to get this control. I'll come back, get the collar, sit right next to him, bring him to his back, slide him back and flatten out, and I'll choke him by pushing forward on his head with my shoulder and pulling the choke. He's only got one hand to defend. The main hand that would really get him out of that choke is bound up by the apron. Side control situation now. We're gonna utilize Eric's key to attack him first, and then I'm gonna attack him with my key. So I have him here in a head attacking, what we call a head attacking side control. He'll have a defensive forearm to my throat. I'm gonna break his gi here. I'm gonna put my thumb in his, in his lapel here and break his gi, take it out as far as I can. I just get, just the, the apron itself, the, the collar itself, so that I create almost like a sling around his arm this way. Now when he goes to get his arm out, it's bound up, and it's only for a short time. I'm gonna sit him up somewhat and slide myself towards his head here. I'm not gonna quite take his back, but I just want his arm out of the way so I can bring this leg all the way around in front and turn and get my triangle this way. I could also attack this arm by arm barring it or wrist locking. Again, we'll be in side control. Uh, this time, I, I'll be here, I'll be head attacking again, and I'll be putting pressure into Eric's head. I wanna, 
I want to put enough pressure so that I hide what I'm trying to do over here on this side. I'll keep my head down and I'll pull my gi out. I'll make a rope out of this side of my gi. I'll hand it to the other hand and bring my hand to put me, create a wedge on the other side of his head. Walk my way all the way up, north south. Drop my head in the mat and turn my wrist as I pull up with my arm to choke him out. If you notice, my gi is the, the, the side closest to his legs, my lapel closest to his legs. I come across. When I come off his body, it pulls the gi this way. If I stay too close to the legs, it won't go across his throat. That's why I have to walk my way back to north-south. And then I pry up. I pry his head into the choke and turn the wrist, a double action of the choke. This is a big combination off of a closed guard situation. I'm gonna be using Eric's key against him. So I'll have a closed guard on him. Sometimes while we're fighting, I'll start setting myself up and just tear the gi out as we're doing other attacks. And, faking towards other things. I may go back to it, I may not. I might find what I want here in an arm bar choke or taking the back. But if I need it, that gi is already over there. So now I find the end of the apron and I pull it up this way and I hand it to my other hand. I'm gonna go across this way and grab the gi here. Now at this point, Eric already knows he has an idea what I'm trying to do here. This is a great choke. It's hard to defend. Once I get to it here, I grab the gi. I try to grab his apron again on this side, and I'm gonna choke him this way. There might be a hand fight going on here. There might be all kinds of stuff happening. He starts to get preoccupied with fighting the gi or fighting my, my guard, passing my guard, and I'll go to here. And, and elbows down, and just turn your wrist. It's a very fast choke. Usually though, He's gonna defend with that hand maybe. So he defends with that hand. If he does defend with that hand, I bring it across my body, but I keep him at center line. I keep him at center line. I pull him in with my legs and I pull and pull the choke. Very tight choke. If he defends with the other hand, a lot of times he'll defend with the other hand. He might grab my hand this way. If he does, I bring my leg up behind that arm and I throw this to break his posture. And he can still hold on to this hand. I'll just choke him here. The choke's not working. I let go. I get my hand free. I got an arm bar. This could also go this way. The geese here. He gets my bicep. And he fights me off with, with my bicep. That still can work in my favor if I know what I'm doing. I'm going to bring my arm way up. And I'll start acting like I'm trying to free myself here. But if I bring my arm way up and I bring my knee up, now I have that arm again. Now I'm here again, I'm breaking the posture. Now I can start attacking the choke again and possibly attack the arm. 